Setting up Notion automations can feel like a really complex topic, but I am here to tell you exactly how to get started setting up simple automations that can make a huge difference in your workflow. Now, before we jump into a few real life cases of how I personally use automations, let's first talk about what automations are and how we can set them up. Notion automations are actually going to live inside of our databases. So they are located at the top right hand corner of your database under the little lightning icon. Now, if databases are a topic that you want to learn more about, I highly recommend grabbing my database dynamics masterclass where we really deep dive into databases. It also comes with a workbook and a resource guide that even includes all of the possible trigger options for automations. So if you would love to boost your database database knowledge and get access to this workbook as a reference, I will leave the link for you in the description box below. Now, something else to note about automations is they are actually a paid feature in Notion. Now, even if you don't pay for Notion, you can actually make a lot of these automations still work with either normal buttons like I have up here or database buttons. Just know that you won't have access to Slack notifications, email notifications, or webhooks. Personally, I do have to say there are a lot of times where I actually prefer buttons over automations because I have the ability to choose when to trigger them. So that is something to keep in mind as well. So that being said, the way automations work is that you want to have a trigger and then an action will happen after that. So inside of our automations, these are our trigger options that we do have. We can go off of any property that is edited across the database. We can look at when a specific property is added by coming down here and looking at all our property options. We can also do when a new page is added to the database or we can do it on a certain time frame. This is really great for recurring tasks and I actually have a video all about recurring tasks where I show you how to set up automations for those. So be sure to check that out if it's something you are interested in. Now the way this typically works is when something happens in your database, so if a property is edited or you choose a specific property to be edited here, it is going to do something else on that same page. Now that is not always the case. We can actually trigger things to happen in other databases, but for the most part, we're probably going to be working within the same database. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a trigger here just as an example, and then we can add an action. So our actions include things like editing the properties. So again, this is going to be working in the same page that triggered the initial automation. We can add a page to or edit pages in, and this this is where we were talking about doing things in other databases. We can also send a Notion notification, a Slack notification, or a Gmail email. Again, if you're not on the paid version, you won't have access to the Gmail or the Slack notifications, but you certainly can set your own Notion notifications. Now we can also send a webhook, which this is typically used for something like Zapier. We are actually going to trigger a completely external automation from this. Again, if you're using a database button or a normal button, this specific action is not available on the free version. And then lastly, we can define variables, which is a really great thing to do if you find yourself reusing something through multiple different actions in your automation. We are not gonna get too far into the weeds into this one today because that does typically involve Notion formulas, but these are all of the actions that are available to us in our automations. So my biggest tip when it comes to setting up automations is to look for things that you are naturally doing that are incredibly repetitive. This could be adding pages to your databases or editing pages in your databases, or when you change a specific property, you also need to to change another property. Keep an eye out when things start to feel repetitive and I'm sure you will find some use cases very quickly. Now, I want to show you a couple examples of my automations that I have set up that do help me save time. Some of these are very simple and others are a little bit more complex, so let's take a look. My first automation that is a pretty simple one is within my household products. So this is where I keep track of everything that we like to keep in stock in our house just to make sure that I don't accidentally run out. So what I typically do is I go through here and I just keep an eye on the stock for all of these different items 
and change it as I need to. Now, when something gets to be a low stock, what I will do is I will switch it to low and then I will typically check the need now checkbox, which then sends it to my to buy list. And then I can easily go there and see what I need to buy when it's time to bulk order things. But as you can imagine, that is a pretty obvious automation right there because every single time I change the stock to low, I also check the need now checkbox. So what I ended up doing was creating a automation specifically for that so that any pages in my products view here, whenever the stock is set to low, the need now checkbox is then checked. So to see what that looks like, if I switch this stock to low here and we keep a little eye out because it does take a minute to sync, the need now checkbox will then check. Now, sometimes you might find that you have a very simple automation like that, but it is a little bit more complex with the trigger portion. So I want to show you one that I have set up in my content database. So this automation is specifically when I am editing my emails, what happens is that when my email is ready to be proofread, I switch it to editing and then it assigns the email to my mom because she does my little proofreading for me before my emails go out. Thank goodness, because sometimes my brain is not working right. <laughs> but in this case, I very specifically wanted to make sure that only assigned it to her automatically when it was an email. So what I have is that I want to make sure my status gets set to editing but I also wanna make sure that the post type is only email. So I have my email single blasts, my email campaigns, and my email newsletter listed here. And then when both of these triggers occur, then it's going to assign it to my mom. So you can get a lot more specific on what those triggers are just to make sure that these things are happening when you actually want them to and not just kind of going running amok. <laughs> it is really important in this case though to make sure that you have when all triggers occur selected here. You do have the option between all and any and if you have any here, then it's not necessarily going to look at both of these triggers. It will only look at one. So we do want to make sure in the case of multiple triggers, that at least if it's important to you in that way, we want all to be selected. Now, another feature of automations that I really like is the ability to send Notion notifications. I don't do this for everything because I don't want my notifications constantly blowing up, but I think it can be really helpful in certain situations. One thing I did set up in my tasks database was for a notification to be sent to me when my mom completes tasks. So she also works for me a little bit with bookkeeping and doing some some admin tasks. And so if I assign her something, I completely forget that I've assigned her anything. And then later she'll be like, oh, by the way, I did this for you. And I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> but I don't necessarily want her to feel like she has to report everything to me just so I know it gets done. I could go and like pay a little bit more attention to her page, but I really trust her to do things on her own. I just kind of want to know when things are happening in the background so I'm aware that projects are in fact being completed. So in this specific automation, I have that whenever a task has been assigned to her and done is set to complete, it's just going to send me a quick notification that says VA completed a specific task. As a side note, it's a little funny to me because she signs all her emails a VA because her name's Virginia but she's also a VA, so it's kind of cute. <laughs> so I have it just say VA completed. Now I am using formulas a little bit here and what is actually happening is I am coming in and I am actually using the trigger page and pulling information from that trigger page to get the name of the task in this specific formula. So that way when the notification gets delivered to me, it does in fact say VA completed the name of the task and not just, oh, this task was completed and you have to go figure out what the task is. <laughs> so that is just a little trick that I love to use with automations. Now, lastly, I wanna take a look at a little bit more complicated one. It does have a nice big long formula in it. And this is actually to set up my recurring meetings. 
So I do monthly meetings with my mom. And typically what we do is we create the meeting at the beginning of the month, and then we go ahead and do it at the end of the month. Now, right now I actually have this pause because I'm planning to go on maternity leave and we are not gonna be doing any meetings during that time. So we will have one nice long meeting to get caught up at the end but typically this will recur on the other months after when I start back up again. So the way that this specific automation works is it's actually a repeating automation. So I have this set to go every month on the first day of the month. And then what it's actually going to do is add a page to our team meetings database, which is what we're looking at right here. And it's also going to apply the template for a new team meeting. Now I have a little formula here because unless we're having some weird special meeting, I always name it the month and the year. So what it's doing is it's looking at the date triggered and then it's gonna format it to the month and the year for me. So it automatically names this meeting. I also make sure the status is set to upcoming. And then my meeting date here is my nice long formula that I have set up. What it's actually doing is it goes and it looks for the first Saturday of the next month because that's typically when we actually do our meetings. And then it pulls that date and it puts it for the meeting date. Now, again, don't feel like you have to know formulas in this fancy way in order to use automations, but they can help quite a bit. So if formulas are something you also want to get better at, I do have a masterclass on the formula foundations as well. And I highly recommend checking that out too, because it gets you started, even if you're not a techie person. Then I have a, another action here that will send a notification to both of us just to say, hey, here's this month's meeting for you. And then feel free to pop in here and add discussion topics as needed. Certainly do not feel like you have to start with the most complicated automations. Find things that you do in your daily workflow that feel repetitive or more like you're managing Notion than actually doing tasks and start by automating those. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any automation questions, let me know down below in the comments. In my next video, I'm gonna tackle iPhone automations with different things like how you can easily create pages in Notion to setting timers with one tap using the Shortcuts app. I am super excited for this one. It's going to be so good, especially if you use Notion on your phone. So be sure to subscribe and turn on those post notifications so you don't miss it. Until then, you can check out my top tips and tricks for using Notion on your mobile device in this video next. I will see you in the next one.